Hi everyone. Welcome to Tapping Your Creativity in my studio. Today, as you can see, I am in my Northeast Minneapolis studio, my actual studio, and I'm super excited to uh, share this space with you today. Not every day I will be doing the interviews from here. I will be using my home studio as well, so we'll just kind of go as, as we can. But I just wanted to thank you all for joining me today, especially such in such challenging times. This is the first time that I'm back after almost nine days. This have been days of reflection, learning, and listening. We must oppose racism and discrimination wherever it exists. We must fight against systemic oppression. As a Mexican immigrant myself, I want to be diverse and inclusive in this platform and use my voice to help you every day to create and to be inspired and to learn. I am proud to stand together with all peoples of color, race, whatever their beliefs are. I stand with all of you. We need to be introspective now and question ourselves on how we can change for the better so we can inspire others to walk the walk and not only to talk the talk. So without further ado, I'm going to have now join my incredible friend, colleague and artist from Mexico City, Giselle Fenning. She will be joining us from Mexico City. And I am just thrilled to have her today in my studio joining me today. She is an abstract contemporary painter and there she is. Welcome Giselle. I'm so excited for you to be joining us today. I am I feel very honored that you're joining us from Mexico City and uh, please tell us a little bit about who you are, where you work and uh, where do you live? Thank you, Sandra. It's an honor for me to be here and be part of this project. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I am very, very, very proud of it. And I live in Mexico City. And I was born in New York. And my parents are from Mexico, but I, I was born there because my father is a physician. He's a surgeon. So he went there to make his specialty and residency and me and my, one of my sisters, we were born there. I moved to Mexico when I was four years old and I live here since then. But I am Mexican and American. I love both of the countries. I, I am the same way. My heart will always be in Mexico, but now I'm American, so my, half my heart is here and half will always be home, which is my hometown of Mexico City. So tell us, Giselle, how is the situation right now with, with COVID and what's happening? Uh, I know uh, Mexico is, is really struggling right now in, in all fronts of combating this COVID. Yes, um, we are still on the top of the curve. Maybe like two or three weeks ago, we started on, at the top and I think we're we will be there almost three or four weeks more. I don't know. All the business and the industry are still closed. The hospitals are on the top of the, um, they are full. And we have, each day we have a big number of sick people and dead people. And it's a very sad situation. Yeah, I, I, I hear the news and my whole family is still down there and it's very worrisome of what's happening right now in Mexico City. Um, like you said, hospitals are Thank food you. capacity and, um, and you know, we, we need all the help we can get. So, um, you know, it's, it's very nice for you because you have your studio at home, correct? Yes, I am you lucky to have yes. my studio at home. And uh, you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And it, it, it helped me a lot in these moments because in my full house, it's my studio. I have a big garden. I can show it. That's my place for 
I don't know if you can see a little bit. Yeah. It, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's, that, that's the place where, where I, I varnish my, my, my art. And sometimes when I make droppings and many things, but I have my studio at home and it has been a very good uh, moment for me to be painting, experimenting, and it's a therapy for me in this moment. Yes, I think for all of us artists, I think the best way that we can uh, help ourselves um, is to go into our studios and, and paint. And um, the whole purpose of this interviews is to inspire people at home and to teach them maybe something new that they didn't know. So Giselle, tell us, um, when did you, how did you start um, your art career? When did you start? When did you know that you were attracted to art? Since I was a kid, I loved all the arts and crafts, and uh, now I can honor my grandma. She was a very uh, creative woman. She made a lot of, uh, you know, bonsai uh, trees with beads. Uh, she was a great cooker. Uh, I loved to, to be at her home because I was always making things, you know? And, I took some uh, painting classes when I was a kid and maybe like 15 or 16 years ago, I, I began to my journey of art, no? I went to many different workshops, classes, and I learned many techniques, but I wasn't happy with the art I was creating because I was looking for something I didn't know what, but I, I was looking for some art that was more, spontaneous, more, more fru freely way of painting. And all the classes I have been, they were more traditional uh, art. So art, yeah. Yes, it took me hours, hours of, of research. Yeah. To research until I found, instead of painting, I was researching until yeah. I found, uh, until I found art, an artist I was, attracted to and I can probably say that many of the artists I found they are or they're going to be with you in this project and yes yes uh, and it's like Krista Harris and Nancy Hillis and I Steve have Amony. I began Steve Amoni I began to follow them I took many uh, workshops online and then I started to experiment and, and try to paint a different way I was painting. Uh, I always, I have always been comfortable painting faces and abstract human figures, but I was not happy with how I was painting them. So I finally found Steve Aimoni and I went to some of the workshops and residencies and I learned from him to respect my energy, my, uh, and, and your process. I want, yes, my process. So yes. I, my challenge was to make a fusion of the abstract and non-objective process with my, fa the faces and the abstract human figures I was painting. So I have been working on it and now I can say that I have my own style, that people recognize my art, and that's it, still working. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's very important, and I think that, you know, you have to keep trying, and you have to, you know, keep uh, doing what you're doing until you find that, that language that starts speaking back to you, and I believe that you have found that language through your paintings. Um, you have a very interesting way of approaching a painting because you do start in a very abstract, non-objective uh, way. And for people that know, don't really know the word non-objective, it's the language that we use as abstract um, painters. And so we use mark making, we use uh, geometrical shapes, we use forms, we use community of um, marks that speak to us in a, in a different way. And we start reacting to the marks that we make on our canvas. So you start by activating your canvas. 
on a very non-objective way, and then somehow the figure emerges from your paintings, correct? Yes, yes. I, I have no any, I don't plan my painting. I start to respond what I am looking, what the painting says to me. And sometimes it comes very easy and very fa it's fast, and sometimes it takes a long process. Yes, yes. And I think that, you know, um, you start maybe my, and you're going to show us later, but um, do you do you have uh, colors in mind when you start your work? Do you put up a palette or you just start going and responding to your canvas? Um, I love color. I need color in my art, but I don't plan a palette. I don't mix different shades of color. I really respond and to the colors I need to, but um, my palette is, it's very simple, but uh, all the mixing colors I make, and the, I make them straight to the canvas. I don't make a, a palette before, uh, at the beginning. Okay, so what, what you're saying you to us, yes, yes, yes. What you're saying to us is that you grab the, the, the canvas and you start painting and then you mix on the canvas, which is really cool. Right? Yes. Let me um, let me show yes. this as a good example. Yes. Do you see here yes. is part of the activating canvas? I start. Yes. Okay. I'm going to turn off the comments for right now so people can yes. see, and then I'll turn them on um, at the end of our interview for questions. Okay. So go you, ahead. You can see I begin. I began here with the activating canvas with the different tools. I use charcoal, graphite, um, pastels, and um, water-soluble uh, uh, colors. And then I start painting. And you can see here all the mixing colors. I mix directly here at the canvas. On the canvas, yeah. On the canvas. So that's my process. At the end, I use a some of the pastels and all uh, oil bars, oil pastels, and that's my process. And do you do you have someone in mind? Do you do you have inspirations, artists that you have been inspired by? Um, my biggest inspiration and in the painter I admire is uh, William de Kooning. I feel very connect with his brushed strokes uh, Egon Schild um, uh, also is an uh, is, uh, artist that I really like all the uh, the figure, the human figure is amazing for me Right. and many many contemporary painters I love the, the different materials, they use the different languages so I have uh, many many um, information and Influences. Inspiration. Yeah. Influences. Yeah. Yeah. Which is amazing. So keep showing us your work. We'd love to see okay. that. Okay. Okay. Let me show you. Do you uh, usually one. work on canvas or on paper? I both. Both. I, oh. I prefer to work on on, on canvas, but uh, I like to uh, work on paper too. This is a paper. I don't remember the name. Are if. I'm got, you have it on the list. Yes, I will this put all the materials a, down. Okay. This paper is a thicker, like a thicker Fabriano. Uh, it's very, it's nice to work on it because you can work with uh, fluids, with acrylics, with a lot of mediums, and it still works. It doesn't go, you know, wavy. It doesn't and, want, yeah. Yes. And um, this one is, um, this my process was, I was painting, you know, with some, this one, the the fluid. Uh, the fluid acrylic, yes. Acrylic of golden. Yeah. And then different colors. And after that, I, I begin to, uh, to draw with some graphite or charcoal. And then I cancel some of the part, the different parts and start working on the figure. Yeah, what is nice, if you can bring up a little bit so we yes. can see it better, that'd be great. That's perfect. So so I know that on that paper, you can really um, erase marks 
very yes. easily, either with acetone or with water or, you know, whatever you are using. And uh, you can just make a, a, you know, you dab it in, 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 uh, in a paper towel and then you remove the painting, which is also a way of making marks. Removing yes. marks is also a way of making marks. Okay. Exactly. 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 Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you can see here some of the drops and it's fun. Do you, do you prefer um, paper versus canvas or you don't have a preference? I love canvas. Yeah. <laughs> I love canvas. <laughs> I, mean, I love canvas. Yes, I, I do too. I love canvas and I like working on canvas that it's on stretch too because I can really like, you know, go in it without yes. hurting the canvas and I don't get that bouncing back from it. So I paint on it and then I stretch it. What do you do? One moment, technical <laughs> problems. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I do both. I do both. Here, you can see my wall. Yes. Sometimes yes. that's paper, but I staple, you know, I, I use some staples and I stretch, not, not the canvas, but the, not, I don't stretch the canvas, but I work on it and some, and then I, I stretch it, but uh, on the last works I have do been doing, I, I have been working on stretch on canvas. Stretch canvas. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, because and of the situation, you know, I need to go outside and right. You don't want to do ask, that right now. Yes. So right, I'm asking for my stretch canvas, and I'm working on this. Let me ask you something: Is it easy to get materials in Mexico City? Like, can you get um, your art materials? How are you doing that? Um, I can, I have places here in Mexico. We have different brands, different materials. Uh, people, you know, when I need to stretch a canvas, I have the right person and come here to the door of my house and I, I need a special size and I have it. Um, we have different stores uh, with, my, you know, the paintings, but I really love the American brands and I try every time I travel i try to bring some of different you know golden liquitex uh, yes yes no we, we always want one we don't have so i exactly. like things that you have in mexico that i can't exactly. get here and yes. you like things that i have here that you can't get in mexico so yes. we're always like that so. exactly <laughs> so trying to work with you have to be creative and you have we have to paint and do what we can with what we have with so, what you have, exactly, exactly. And um, has it affected you? Has it affected your painting at all? Or are you still being able to create colorful, beautiful, figurative paintings right now? I'm still working on it. And I think I'm changing a little bit my style because I have been stuck in my faces. So now I am experimenting. I have more time and, uh, you know, more, more practice. So that helps to move. Yes. I think that now is the time to really go out and make explosion of art, whatever that may be. Like I see my studio around me and it's just like, Oh my goodness, I had all this inside of me that needed to come out. And, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter. There's no judgment on myself. I'm just kind of going for it. And so it, it makes it almost very freeing to do that. Yes. And what I think is that before COVID, we were looking and we were very worried about our look outside the home. No, and now yes. that we are staying home, we want to have a good environment, a good space, and we need the art. That's we need I the think. art. We need the artist. Yes. We need to be inspiring yes. people at home who are paralyzed. Yes, for sure. Yes, because yes. mental health is very it challenging helps. right now, and yes. uh, we are helping people at home. There is no doubt. So. Um, Giselle, you're going to show us a little bit of, um, more, I don't know if you want to show us a little bit more of your artwork or if we're going to um, go. Um, yes, I'm going to show you a different one, a, mono, a monoprint that we are going to work on. I'm going to work and I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's a very funny technique. Okay. okay. Um, this is the finished piece. 
Oh, the reflect, the reflect. It's okay if you, yeah, there, perfect. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's okay. a little reflective, but we're going to yes. see her work at it. So. Okay, but I have right here a, a paper that I have been working on it in a different, different um, life I have, I've done. This is the final result, not final, because, but, but this is what we are going to, to do today, okay? And it's a monoprint, and these are different, different pieces. And I'm going That's to show amazing. you how I, my process. Yes, wow. Thank you for sharing that with us. It's a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my gloves because this first um the paint the, the painting I use for this process is offset ink. It's a uh, ink oil based that they oil based that they use it in the serigraphy uh, printing. process printing. I'm having problems with the yes here. The and okay. mm, yes, and it's an old base, so we need some spirit or some trumpetine or um, um, all medium to okay. work with. Okay, okay I'm going to change the camera a little bit. Yes, perfect. Is it yeah, okay? We, perfect. Okay. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. These are the my pal. This is my palette. It's black, black, blue, white, and. Red and Red, yellow. Yellow. Uh, yellow. Okay. So primary you can colors. Use primary colors, and you can use any all painting, also abs uh, acrylic. It doesn't matter. This is the way I learned it, and this is the way I, I like it. No, nope. I don't have yes. the original. It comes in in a can, but I don't have the original one. So it's okay. I have okay. the I have a list of the materials that okay. I'm gonna be putting up. Okay. This paper I use is, uh, in Mexico, we call it cuche. I okay. don't know how, what's the name of, uh, in the United States. It's a, it had, it's a little bit, uh, you know, glossy. shiny, glossy, yes. Okay, it doesn't is matter. It a, is it a heavy, heavy paper, you think? No, 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 no. it's not heavy. And okay. it's not so thin and not so thick. It's a uh, it medium. I don't know, uh, yeah. medium. I'm going to try to find the, the, the name I use. They, they use in the US. Okay. okay, what I do is I begin to activate the paper. I use this watercolor crayon, uh, crayons, and also, you know, the oh, yeah, the Stabilo, Stabilo, the Stabilo yeah. ones. Those but, are my favorite. I yeah. love the Stabilo. Yeah. So I start activating the canvas and let's do whatever. I try to figure a face or something. So really paper. you're just moving your hand with no rhyme yes. or reason. You're just moving it all over the paper and you're just really, like you said, you're activating it um, yes. using different kinds of crayons and uh, the Stabilo um, markers. Yeah, or, markers, uh, okay. Yeah. So here's my 214. Okay. I have to do it fast because I can't. Uh, <laughs> I know. Very, it's, it's very strong. Yes. The, the you can't that. smell so, that. Yes. Yes. I like it, but. Uh, not too much. Not too much. <laughs> not too much. Can give you a headache. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I so need you a are little bit of the color. color. Yes. Okay. And I try to do. To it a little bit lighter with the turpentine. Yes. So the turpentine, what it does is just it thins it out. It acts. It, yes. It's it, used it, it, in, in with oil paints. We use turpentine. Um, turpentine. Or yes. spirit. Yeah. Or mineral spirit. Spirit. Um, mineral spirit. Exactly. In, instead of water, because uh, exactly. that's what well, we use to paints. make it thinner. Yes. Yes. Can you see it? Or do yes, I need perfect. to move the camera? No, perfect. no, you're perfect. So, you're perfect. Yep. I began begin to do some marks in different places, and it, and then I mix some colors. 
I don't know what's going to be the final result, but what I like of this technique is very spontaneous and the accidents are very, very welcome. Nice. <laughs> yes, yes, welcome, because that's the way, yeah. Yes, we, we love the accidents and uh, we never know what we're going to get. And what exactly. I like about that is that you can edit it so easily um, and, um, and apply the, the paint. It looks like it's just flowing through the whole paper uh, very, very nicely. So that texture of that paper being glossy that way, it makes the brush stroke just slide versus you yes. trying to Let put me. in the paper, the, the paint, you know? Mm -hmm. So do you make many runs on the mana print or you take it from one and then you continue to paint I, on? One, just one. One, and okay. Yes, my wonderful paper towels. Yes. And sometimes I can, you know, also paint with a towel and take yeah. some paint out that it's nice. Yeah, I love, I love doing that because like I said, not only does it edit, but you can also make uh, marks, with, marks the, yes. with it. So it's fantastic. I made something wrong. Why? I painted the paper and I don't have oh. to paint in the paper. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. That was probably me. Uh, no, 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 no. Having no. you okay. switch it around. That's okay. great because we get to see it twice. And twice. We'll see how Let's start again. <laughs> let's start again. Then I said, what's the next step? I can't do it. Okay, let's activate the canvas again. <laughs> I love this. This is great. For people that didn't see it before, we get a yes. second chance. Yes, so for I love sure. That. And yes. this is part of the art experiment. This is part of the process. We all make process. mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> Especially That's when you're thing. being live and interviewed in, yeah. in not your first language. language. Okay, okay. So, very important. I need a... <laughs> Acrylic base. <laughs> That's why I was looking at you. I'm like, really? Is that how you start? <laughs> oh my god! Okay. This is an acrylic base. You can use any base. Also, a uh, um, glass. Uh, glass. Yes, I prefer yes. acrylic. It's safer. So I yes. make my. I, with the yes, tape, yes. I made yes my mark of the size of you the, framed the it. paper. You framed yes, it. you framed yeah, the, frame the paper. It. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna start to paint <laughs> in the glass, in the base of uh, the acrylic base. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, that it's so funny. I was wondering how you were gonna transfer that, but I thought maybe she has a different way now that I didn't. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a different technique. A it's a different thing. technique, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. But because you can also use that paper to paint, and it really glides beautifully, the paint yeah. is great to use that paper. So that's why I was like confused there for a minute. But yeah. um, so this is how you actually do a monoprint. So you start it in a glass or acrylic base, and then you start painting on it. And then yes. what Giselle will do is she'll show you. She's gonna put the paper. And the paper will absorb what she just painted on that acrylic base. So she's making her marks right now. She's using um, turpentine and oil. Um, and she is mixing the colors um, right there on her tray and also on the acrylic. And um, yes. she's, you work so fast, Giselle. This is crazy. Do you normally I'm work this fast? fast? Yes. 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 I work fast. And so now you're using the the tip of the uh, brush yes. to make some marks. Exactly. Okay. So here's the magic. Here's the the right process. Okay. Okay. So you can see here's all my painting. You can see it. It's a little bit. Yeah. No, we can totally see okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now she's going to grab the, Here's the my paper 
that she yes. activated. Yes. She's going to place that upside down. I'm going to. Okay. And my roller, I don't know. Ah, here's my roller. I use this roller. You can use your hand. Whatever you have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What I also do is, again, with this part of the with the tip of the brush, the, brush, so the, brush. the other side of the brush. Yes. She's making start, marks on the marks. paper. <laughs> yes. I don't know what's going to be there, but it gives a different and a nice effect. So yes. I'm going to start. Here's wow. The, that's amazing. This and is now one. you have an incredible base. And you can to, see it. Yeah. Yes. And I can still yeah. work with this base. It's a little bit What's dry, so I it? can use a little bit of media. Yes. Turpentine. Yeah. Turpentine. So I'm going to put a little bit more. Different to color, maybe? This painting out. Mm, not, I am not, I'm using only the uh, two. Oh, you're time. just a turpentine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, because okay. there's a lot of painting over there. So, yeah, it can help. Yeah. But maybe I can use different marks with another color. And you do, you do use different brushes, right? You use all different yes. kinds of um, yes. different brushes. brushes. Size brushes. Because it's important to make all these different marks with different brushes. Yes. And so she's going back with the turpentine to make sure that that is, um, that has fluid, enough fluidity, I guess. And now Here. we're using a different paper. Yes. To make another. Doesn't have the mark making. I didn't make the marks. But. That's okay. Then we'll see what I'm happens. I'm going to use. Yeah the tip again. That's awesome. And you know what? A lot of people can do this at home. At you home know? with any color. Any color. You know, yeah, it doesn't need to any be oil. Paint. It could be acrylic. It can be any type, keep, really. Keep painting. painting. Yes, yes, you can yes. do it. And yes. it's amazing the results you can find. OK. This one is very, very, uh, yeah, fluid. Mm -hmm. it is just, fluid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I, what I like to do also with my magic towel, I can begin to erase to some and erase. make some marks. Yeah. Yes. And start some making marks. marks and give it shape. Exactly. And I can paint direct does it um how is the the fluidity on there is that good can you is it is it working okay for you yes like can you for work you? at the same pace that you were working before um can you sometimes or do you have it, or now or now you're thinking more no, I am not thinking. No. Okay. Okay. So you're still just kind of just creating and putting marks and, and yes. not worrying about yes. anything. anything. So w when do you start um, thinking about um, finishing a painting or how do you finish a painting? Oh, it's a challenge for me because sometimes it's easier than other times and I have to respond or accept what the painting is saying. He's telling you, yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, that's and, amazing. Uh, I love okay. that. Now I need to breathe a different, it's too heavy for me. <laughs> I try <laughs> to do it in an open space. Yes, but, do you not have the orderless? Kind of, do you not use the orderless kind? Does it work the same way or no? Not really. I haven't tried it before and I have many of this one, so I want to finish it and then 
try yes. a different one. Because I, I have tried the odorless and it really works actually. You, yes? Okay. Yes, yes. For the, for my for next. the next time, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So that's my process. And this one is dry already. And so can then, you bring that closer so we can see the detail on that? Yeah, that's yes. great. Yeah, you can see how the paint get absorbed so differently in this kind of paper. It almost looks like, you know, it captures the, the water, the bubbly water in there. Yes. And then that gives a texture in itself. Yes, and if you you can see here all the you know the the marks of the the brush is because yes. the painting was drier than than in other than places. This places exactly. So yeah. you have to experiment and see how you like it and see the different marks. Yeah, no, I, I I think that this is an incredible lesson for all of us because. You know, we can all find uh, materials at home to do it and to experiment, and, yes. and why not? And then, you know, and and also, you know, the plastic uh, we use at the at the kitchen the, to wrap the food, the food and everything. Oh, and yeah. Also, you can they can use it. Too. Yeah. The what's the name of the the the, the, the saran wrap? Oh no, the wax. The, the wax saran paper. wrap. The, or saran wrap. Not also wax paper and the saran wrap. Also a plastic bag. They yes. can use it instead of a, a, a acrylic base. So I've there used, are many, yeah. many possibilities. I've used a lot of plastic okay. bags in my in my la latest work, and it's really fun. It's really fun to yes. do prints of that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, and let me show you how do I finish the. Uh, this is another one that I am going to finish it. I'm going to try it. It has, if you see here, yeah, these marks, it's a, it's a pen. It's a pen? I can, you, you can use pen. Oh. A marker or a oh. pen or okay. a, I'm sorry, my, trans, my, my translation. Okay. You can no, see. no, you're doing great. So, I use yeah. this, the Molotov uh, markers, markers with acrylic, acrylic or markers. I can, or I can yes. use, yes, marker. And also at this point, I can use acrylic paint to yeah. cancel some, some parts I don't like. And so this is really you where you create... edit. The edit begins here and the exactly. finishing exactly. touches begin here. So you're going to show yes. us how you do that. Okay, here I have to think a little bit more. Okay. And sometimes, you know, it takes more time. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do it faster and let's see what comes from. Okay, so here I have acrylic paint. Um, so you're going to you start can see putting... The... Yeah, yeah, yes, totally. Okay. Okay, so you start putting the makeup on, I guess. Exactly, the makeup. It's makeup time. <laughs> it's makeup exactly. time. Exactly. It's yes. the fun time now. Exactly. <laughs> and I, and the, at this point, I try to do to use, a, you know, a very good quality of painting with good uh, pigments because that gives my art a more, you know. Yeah. Richness. And, it, and it, it has more body. So the paints exactly. that you're using, they're not fluid. It, it has, exactly. It's a heavy, heavy uh, paint. So, yes. yes. And you can tell because now you're like, um, it, it, it shows on the brush strokes. It's not, it shows on the, on the quality of the, of the color of the paint. And so, yeah, we can totally see that. Mm, let me see what I have. I have here. Let's do one more brush stroke, and then we'll. And that's it. Yeah. And then we yes. can uh, we can finish talking Talk. with you, and and also because I, I I'm I'm not sure if people have questions. This will be the right time for asking questions. But, um, wow, I love that color. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so that's it, and you can. Yeah. No, it's amazing. It really, truly is a beautiful beautiful composition 
and uh, it has everything that a non-objective art has, except that you're giving, uh, trying to give a figure, whatever figure that you think is the right figure to give, which is a beautiful thing. So, um, Here I am, I guess. Giselle, tell me something. Yes. If you had three tips or three lessons that you want to give our audience, what would what would they be? First that we have to accept or accept our own process, our own style, our own energy, because we have many information outside and we want to paint like this artist or the other one. But if we respect that, that's what our uniqueness of art has. So we have to respect that. And um, experiment whatever you have at home, have fun, because painting has have to fun. be fun, have fun, have yeah. fun. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I want to transmit in my art, that it's something that I want to share because it can help, is the beauty of imperfection. Because I made I make faces that they are, maybe they are not the beauty woman or the beauty or the perfect body. But uh, when you see it all together, they are nice. They have, they are, sometimes they, people are attracted to it. So uh, what I want to transmit is that there's beauty in the imperfection, that there's color, made may different shapes, different materials. And that's life, that not everything is nice or beautiful, but there's beauty. But we, there, 100%. I think that now more than ever, um, the way that you just said, there's no difference, there's no boundaries, there's no beautiful or not. Everything is just, we are all one. And uh, if we can attempt to get there, we will be in a better place no matter what we do. So um, I think that, you know, it's, it's incredible. I, I can't thank you enough for showing us your process, for opening your studio to us from Mexico City, my hometown, my love. Yeah. Um, I know, I know. Giselle, tell us where <laughs> we can find your work. Yes. Um, usually the... The uh, social media I, I use more uh, is uh, my Instagram, Giselle Fennig. Uh, I have my Facebook page, it's Giselle Fennig Art. My, my website, Giselle Fennig. And you can find me, you can ask me any question. That, you can send me a direct message. And here I am. Yes. Thank you so and much, Sandra. You know, we're always welcome your questions. And, and if you didn't ask yes. them now, but you have questions later, you know, send it to us. And uh, I can't thank you enough for everyone that stayed and uh, just, you know, are, are really helping us with this incredible project that we have going. There's going to be a amazing. catalog of all of you guys um, that I'm going to be selling at some point with all your... Um, inspiration and uh, and your processes and all your materials for people to have at home. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we will see you on Saturday with interior designer Martha Dayton. I can't wait for that. It will be very, very uh, uh, informational for all of us artists on how we get our art out there. And uh, Giselle, muchísimas gracias. Te agradezco gracias. un montón. Te quiero muchísimo. Gracias por ser mi amiga y por ser una gran artista. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Gracias. Thank you. We did it. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.